Grab a place in your Bibles, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 10 through 13, and today we're going to be talking about the title of the message is Stability 101, Stability 101. We're talking about how to gain uh, this thing called contentment no matter what the circumstances are. No matter if the circumstance is good, the circumstances are bad, the, the, the deck stacked against you, no matter what it is, there's value, Paul said, in finding contentment in the middle of any of it. Come on now. Father, we thank you. Lord God, it's your word that educates us. It's your word that takes us up on a higher plane. It's your word that, 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 that just propels us into good, healthy, godly living. Today, we exercise in your word. Today, we plant your engrafted word. Today, we expect your best on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. In a time that's ever-changing, it's tough to maintain our stability as Christians. We must remind ourselves that stability comes from what's on the inside of us. I want to say that three more times. Stability comes from what's on the inside of us. There's always going to be a trial. There's always going to be some kind of negative talk. There's always going to be something bigger to buy. But stability comes from the inside of us. Everything pertaining to life and godliness is on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. And we got to remind ourselves that stability comes from what's on the inside of us. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verses 10 through 13. Paul talking to the church of Philippi said, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned. Paul said, I have learned. You need to underline that. What Paul learned is something that every believer needs to learn. And the faster you learn it, the better off you are. Touch your neighbor say, I got to learn this thing. I got to learn this thing. I got to learn this. Learned in whatever state I am to be content. Whatever state I'm in. You're going to be in hundreds of states throughout your life. But somehow, some way, we've got to learn to stabilize and to keep a, maintain an even keel and to flourish where we are. Amen. If you're going to give up just because the circumstances look bad, Mike, you're not going to get too far in this thing. You're not going to get too far. To be content, I know how to be abased, he said, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, he said, I have what? Learned. we got to learn it. Both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need, I can do all things through who? Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 8 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. Every Christian does themselves a great favor, and does their family a great favor by knowing and learning just what Paul said. How to stabilize in Christ. How to stabilize in Christ. But let's just face it. There's things that come at us every single day that knock your stability off. Right? This morning I got called. We don't have any power at the church. What we going to do? <laughs> we going to have church. <laughs> I said we're going to have church. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do the same thing we was going to do when we got up this morning. Paul and them didn't have no power. We can still have church. Amen. 
That's not letting circumstances dictate me. I'm not dictated. You're not dictated by circumstances. If you are living your Christian life based on what you are see, seeing, you are living far below the standard for being a Christian and for what Jesus Christ paid for you on the cross of Calvary. We walk by faith and not by sight. You want to exercise yourself in godliness, put a blindfold over your eyes, sir. Take one hour every day. Put a blindfold over your eyes. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by the word of God. You want to stabilize yourself? Base your life on the word of God. Why? Because it never changes. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. It's the same as it was in 1902 as it is in 1952 as it is in 2022. And if I build my life on what is the same, then guess what? I stabilize and I can carry out this Christian journey in a stable fashion, not being rocked here and there like a wave in the sea. The Bible says in the book of James, let not that man think that he'll receive anything from God. Why? Because he's double-minded and he has no stability. We are to gain stability in Christ. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, that's good preaching whether you like it or not. Huh. I'm going to give you four exercises. Four exercises right after them Thanksgiving dinners. I'll give you four exercises. You know the Bible says to exercise in godliness. To train yourself in godliness. Some of us are trained the wrong way. Some of us are trained to be offended. We're trained to gossip. Some, some tongue go around a bluebird bus three times. You trained the wrong way, Cujo. The Bible says it's an unruly evil. And the only thing that would tame it would be the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Huh? Let's train the right way. Let's, I'm going to give you four exercises today on how to train the right way and to have some stability. Listen, anybody can get on fire for God. I, I, I'm, I, I'm all for it. I want to see you on fire. I want to see you blazing. I want to see, but I want to, I want to see that for a long time. Huh? A long time. A poor man thinks about today. A middle class man thinks about this month. A rich man, a wealthy man thinks in terms of decades. Oh, we got to think about this spiritual journey in terms of decades. You hear me? Boy, I'm getting down through there now, ain't I, mama? Uh, thinking about it, out, out, thinking out, I'm thinking way on out there. Because I got to give, I got to give, uh, not just my children's children, I got to leave them an inheritance. I got to leave them a, a spiritual inheritance too. Decades. So I got to make an investment in myself. Paul made an investment in himself to learn a thing. Whenever you go to educate yourself, whenever you go to college, whenever you go to do those things, whenever you go to learn a skilled trade, you invest in yourself to do what? To learn something that will further stabilize you in this life. Four exercises I'm getting there. I'm going to get there, I promise. I'm pumped up, man. The lights are on, dude. <laughs> we in 2022, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> own your own fulfillment. Own your own contentment. Paul said I had to learn something, but you got to own your fulfillment aside from your family, aside from your house, aside from your career. We have to stabilize regardless of what things look like. And I know it's challenging. And I know it, it, it just absolutely rocks us sometimes. Certain situations rock you sometimes. But you got to figure out how to gain that stability. That stability is in Jesus. Amen. It's in a relationship with Christ that we tap into each and every day. 
And my, that's what makes us strong. So you got to own exercise, owning your own fulfillment. Train yourself on how you're going to deal with adverse circumstances. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. you got to train yourself right now. On how I ain't heard a preacher say this in a long time. I'm trying to tell you this. I'm going to get down through some good stuff. You hear me? Train yourself now on how you're going to deal with adverse circumstances. Train yourself now. If you're easily offendable, what you need to do is train yourself right now and put yourself in situations that where somebody could offend you, imagine it, role play it, do it with your husband, do it with your wife, do something where something's going to offend you and train yourself not to be offended. The biggest robber of the word of God is offense, friend. And guess what? Guess who we get offended at first? God. God. When our stability is challenged... Guess who we get mad at first? God. You want me to prove it in the word? I can. Jesus was over there preaching the parable of the sower message. Huh? Talking about the the multiplication of the word, the 36 and 100 fold. And then he got to talking about what would rob the word. And one of the main things that would rob the word was offense. And then his next deal was this. This was the next deal. Let's get in the boat and go to the other side. The word after he just preached that message was, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. They got in the boat doing the perfect will of God. They was going to the other side. But what happened along the way going to the other side? The storms came. The winds blew. And it challenged their stability. It challenged their picture-perfect life. Huh? And then then what did they do? They went down in the belly of the ship, the Bible said, and said, Carest thou not that we perish? Huh? They got mad at Jesus. Carest thou not? (laughs) Oh, Jesus got up and said, My God. I just preached three and a half hours to you goons. On the same thing we're going through. They didn't get a football field and fouled it up. And blamed it on God. Are you blaming something on God? Are you bitter today because your circumstances aren't where that you want them to be? But let me just tell you something. You can't postpone your, your, your contentment, postpone your fulfillment because your present day circumstances are not lined up with where you think they ought to be. Uh-uh. You got to throw yourself a party. You got to buy yourself a piece of cake. Put you a candle in it and celebrate where you are. You used to make $20,000 a year. Now you're making forty-seven. You better get you a piece of cheesecake. <laughs> celebrate the celebrate God. Oh. Next year you're making seventy-two thousand a year. And then on and on and on. Even next year, my own the business. Look here. Celebrate. I'm looking at one hundred percent survivors right here in this room. That's who I'm looking at. survivors. Everybody here is a 100% survivor. Yes, sir. Yes, you are. 100%. You had days you didn't want to roll out of bed. You had days when you thought about it, your your toes curled. You didn't want to go to the front door. You didn't want to face that job or no job. You didn't want to face that family member. You didn't want to face that court case. You didn't want to face all that time. But you got up and you faced it. And the Bible says this too shall come to pass. And you beat every one of them. You beat every one of your bad days right now. Every bad day everybody's got in there. And you guys beat them. 
and you're 100% survivor right now. What you got to be offended for? Not a thing. Not a thing, I said. Hallelujah. You got to get, you got to not, this is the deal. This is the deal. And look here, man. I'm as human as human can be. I get mad every now and then. Not too much. Hey. Hey. I still don't understand why it takes somebody 47 seconds and putting a blinker on the wrong side of the road and it takes that long to make a left turn. I get a little out of shape every now and then. Amen. But we are to be governed by his word and not governed. And do you realize that some people are in situations right now that are not going to change for the next foreseeable decade? There are people serving time. There are people getting issued sentence, sentences on top of sentences every day in courtrooms all across this land. Their situation is going to look bleak for the next decade. So guess what? So what do we do? So what do we do? Do we hide our smile for the next decade? Huh? Do we? Because I'm going to tell you, the devil will let you postpone your joy. The devil will let you postpone your victories. The devil will let you postpone everything that brings you any type of contentment. I'm not postponing nothing. I like that song, Happy. Who's that? Who that dude seen that, that, that pop song, Happy? Pharrell, what, what's his name? Pharrell Williams. I like that. I wish we had that right now. We play that right now, right here in this church. That song went all across the world. Don't you know these people woke up in some bad stuff, but boy, they got to talk about being happy. Huh? That's how you better wake up tomorrow morning. Huh? Put your happy on. Put your happy on. We all got a reason to come up with some kind of something or another why something don't line up. It's every day, folks. It's every single day. It never changes. And it goes on in and on in. Paul said, I learned a thing. A secret. How to be content no matter what. It's one of the most valuable keys you'll ever learn as a Christian. And it hurts me to say that. Why? Because I'm a faith guy. My wheelhouse is faith. Every, when I used to, I, all I, I, for years all I cared about was believing God for something. Goal oriented. Believing for this. Believing for that. Speaking for this. Speaking for that. Walking this out. Walking that out. Word of faith. In and through. Anytime I read a scripture talking about contentment, I thought it meant compromise. But here's the deal. There's a space in time from the time you start believing God to the time that manifestation is going to come. That space, could be, that space could be a day. That space could be 10 years. That space could be 20 years. We can't cancel our contentment in the meantime and in the between time. we got to stay stable. Stability one-on-one. -on -one. We have in church today. Hallelujah. The greatest spiritual power you'll ever have is consistency. Now, I know that sounds boring, but you better warm up to it. You better warm up to it. Anybody can be on fire for six months. Be, keep that candle burning for 40 years. Keep it burning for four. I want to see you guys burn on. You're going to do it through consistency. You're going to do it through stabilizing. You're going to do it by not letting situations whoop your hind end. Uh-huh. 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 Amen. Was that number one or number two? Number two. Challenge your own story Reinvent yourself from the inside out. Now, I'm not talking about from the outside in. They're talking about reinventing herself. They own a magazine, got a different color hair, got a different wardrobe, got a different car. We're not, going, we're not talking about that. If it affects that, amen. What we're talking about is from the inside out. Get a better, healthy perspective of you. Get it from God. It's called identity. The prisons are full of guys that don't know who they are. 
That's why they're there. They don't know who they are. But we got to have a proper, healthy perspective of who we are. Amen. When I got in that wreck when I was 17 years old, and I was facing all that time, you won't talk about circumstances looking bleak. Let me just tell you, I didn't have a, I, I, I couldn't breathe on a good set of circumstances. They wasn't my way. I'm just telling you for a long time. And I got in that car wreck, and one of my friends, because of me, died. And I was facing all that time. I was 17 years old. I was a kid. A kid. I finally got sentenced to seven years, 12 years, served seven in the state penitentiary. And God started teaching me this stuff, man. Because I was severely depressed for 18 months out on bond. Then I went to prison. I went to a bad prison. I didn't go to a, I didn't go to a, a county camp. I went to a prison. You hear me? A prison. And I was depressed there for another 18 months. And I, but you know what I did? I thought about this last night. I got my Bible and I just kept showing up, man. I just showed up. I couldn't even hardly find the index to go find the index to find a book to read. I'm talking 100% illiterate of the Word of God. Did not know. I was so thankful they had hymn books in the church. Because I won't sing with you. But I don't know no songs. I wasn't raised in church. And I was still depressed. I had got born again right there at the first part of the sentence. But I was still depressed. I had no smile, had not smiled in three years. Three years had not smiled. Why? Because I was, I was destroying myself. I was penalizing myself. I, I was trying to pay for it myself. And it wasn't until Jesus said, uh-uh, I paid for that. I paid for all of that. And I was walking, I kept going to church. And I kept going to Bible studies. And I kept showing up to dormitory Bible studies with my Bible. I didn't even hardly know what they was talking about, Jason. I didn't know the term, the renewed mind. I didn't know what word of faith meant. I didn't know what any of that stuff meant. And I know I walked across the prison yard one day. And as I was walking, Jason, it's like a dove just flew off of me. Just lifted off of me. And, and I started to smile. Three years I had postponed my smile and just had just just dying on the inside. Dying. Boy, I ain't never stopped smiling. Never have. Never have. And I got my smile back. And I said, God, how did that happen? Because you know, men, we gotta figure it out. We got to figure it out. We think we got to know everything. So I had to, I said, I don't, I said, God, I don't know. I didn't know what renewing the mind was. I didn't know 12 irrefutable laws to healing. I didn't know all that stuff. I learned that after, you know. I knew nothing. But what, had, what happened was I kept showing up and hearing the word. I kept showing up hearing God say he had a plan for me. I kept showing up saying here, I was more than a conqueror. And I kept on hearing that word until it changed my perspective of me. And allowed me to step into some freedom that I had not been experiencing. Huh? And I sat on that bunk that day on bunk 2, dorm 6, 16. And I sat there and one of the first times God ever spoke to me as an 18-year-old young man. And he spoke to me and he said, how long will you stay here? And I said, what is that you, God? God, I thought I was blown away. God will talk to me. Talk to me? I'm a delinquent. I'm a has-been. And he said, how long will you stay here? And what he was saying was, you got your whole life ahead of you and I'm allowing you to take it right now I'm begging you take it and I stopped punishing myself that day and I took it what is God offering you today to take come on you won't get there by being offended at him but I'm telling you God's offering you all the freedom that you could ever walk in 
But you got to take it. And you got to see yourself as worthy and see yourself as valuable and see yourself the way God sees you. You are way more valuable than you think you are. Come on. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Got my smile back. Changed my perspective. Daddy died about six months ago. We was at the funeral. And all the brothers and sisters, we uh, spoke, spoke about my daddy. And afterwards, we was eating, and my sister said, what's crazy, Brad, is everybody had a different perspective of daddy. I said, yeah. The question is, what's your perspective of yourself? Oh, do you see yourself the way God sees you? Hallelujah. I challenge you today for the next 30 days to do some exercising in godliness. And my God, we've got the ear pods and the headsets and the MP4s and I don't know what else, but we got all the access in the world. Flood yourself for the next 30 days of the word of God. I'm talking about get it in your ears for at least one hour a day. One hour a day for the next 30 days. And let God's perspective, God's what he says about you, change your perspective of who you see yourself. Hallelujah. Point three. Enjoy the journey not just the destination. Enjoy the journey, not just the destination. If the only time you're happy is when you complete a goal, then you're going to be sad a whole lot in between. And I don't know what generation everybody came from through here, but I grew up in the late 70s and the 80s, and, and I don't know what was wrong with the men from that generation, but I do know this, that when you... The men that I grew up around, if you went on vacation with them, that if the trip was less than eight hours, wasn't no potty breaks. Wasn't no such thing as stopping to do no tinkling. Uh-uh. Eight hours, we go. We trying to get there 30 minutes early. I'm talking about white knuckling a steering wheel like you wouldn't believe. I'm talking about who taught them men that? Man, let me get over here and shake this tree, boss. You hear me? Good God Almighty. I'm talking about how in the world could you enjoy the journey when you're, you're worried about your bladder so much? My God, what's going My bladder about to fall out. I'm not going to say nothing right here. I ain't going to say I'm t- <laughs> Some potty more than others, and I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> Some of that's a little ridiculous, you know. <laughs> but look here, we got to celebrate on the way. I stop and eat ice cream with you. I'm going to celebrate on the way. On the way. Absolutely. If only thing, and I know there's some goal-oriented people in here, some vision-oriented people in here, people got some vision boards, people believe in God from some. I know, I know you. I know I talk to you. And you're headed somewhere, and you want to complete some things, and you got some ambitions about your career. I get it, I get it, I get it. But look here. Enjoy the journey. Figure out how to enjoy the way on the way. Amen. Figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out. Enjoy the journey. Last one. We're going we're to make your relationships count. Exercise in making. Number one, our relationship with God. Know this, that eternal life is paid for. That ought to be enough right there to get you guys jumping. Eternal life is paid for. It's paid for. And the same one that paid for it walks with me, talks with me, knows my name, knows my name. 
that in itself and knowing that he's in charge in itself takes the load off of me. Why well, I don't got to think I got to figure everything in this life out. I don't have the mental capacity to do it and neither do you. Amen. That point alone takes off the stress. This life's full of too much stress anyway. Why put the stress on yourself to run your whole life? You are not that smart even though you're real smart. Amen. And treasure your relationship with God. Treasure that. That's how I got through. That's how I got through, man, with all that time. When I was doing that time down that road and I was just a kid just trying to learn my way and God was showing me, God was speaking to me and I was learning to hear his voice and to turn left and turn right. Don't talk to this person, talk to this person. And God was showing me how to, he would fight my battles for me and I didn't have to fight the battles and just through little different situations he was teaching me how to do this and, and teaching me how to do that. But Lord my God, to treasure that relationship, what really got me through is sometimes it would be my life was so chaotic and so much full of chaos in that system that I would just bow my head and close my eyes and the only peace that I got was praying to a loving God. You hear me? The thing that stabilizes you the most is praying to a loving God. He said, I know what it's like. I figured it out. I learned the thing. Whether we're down, whether we're out. You know how much power you have, man, that when you can face anything. Paul got a little arrogant towards the last day. See, he started inviting trials. He said, bring them on. Because there's going to be more of a glory out of these things. We're going to show you something. I learned something. He learned how to beat them. He learned how to not, that's when you're getting somewhere as a Christian, when that thing's not beating you every which way and you start beating it. We could have come down here this morning, throwed our hands up, said, up, oh, we've only got two singers, up, oh, there ain't no power on, up, oh, not going to have church, and it would have beat us. Guess what? We're not going to go, we're not going to back up that easy. We ain't got that kind of backup in us. Uh, Ford, march on, Christian soldiers. Ford, and that's the deal. Don't the contentment and the fulfillment that we need to stabilize us in this life allows us to beat the storms, to beat the circumstances, to beat the circumstantial evidence, and to come out on top all the while maintaining our joy, the joy of our salvation. Amen. Amen. You, that means you wake up no matter how much money's in the bank and just smile and be happy about it. If you're run, ruled by your, if you're ruled by your circumstances, I guarantee you, just as name as my, just as short as my name's Brad Walter. If the money gets low, you get low, guaranteed, guaranteed. If the bills come knocking and there's no money, I can tell, I can tell whether how if you've got this stuff dialed in or you don't. I'm telling you, I can tell, and God can tell too, and the devil can tell too. But Paul said he learned something. He learned how to march on in victory in this stuff and not let it beat him and to stabilize. If I'm waiting on somebody to call me Mr. Popular before I live out my best life, I'm going to tell you, there ain't no victory in that. No victory in that. No victory in waiting on people. No victory in it. But my God, there's, there's great reward for learning how to be fulfilled and content. Boy, I preach that like a faith message in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. If you need prayer today, if you got a circumstance that's been beating you, we want to pray with you today because why? I've had them beat me. Amen. And we know how to get to the one that will help you beat it. Amen. Thank you.